Alice versus Galatia on Alexandria. Interesting map choice there. You all know, love or hate Tylus. Tylus is... Oh, it looks like we have Alexandria Knight. So, okay, now we need to talk a bit about the terrain here, because Alexandria, as you can see, forest map, which should be good for Tylus. Since Tylus has a lot of strong infantry and is vulnerable to missiles, they don't have any elite skirmishers, aside from the Thracian Peltas, and they also have the Raiding Horsemen. The forest is going to make them take less fire from missiles, and cavalry is going to be less effective against them. So that's good for Tylus. Uh, a challenge is that this is a knight battle. So the already low morale of Celtic warriors and levy freemen and... Uh, let's see where they are. Tribals. Maybe he didn't bring any tribals. That would be awesome. Oathsorn, Oathsorn, Oathsorn. I can't see any tribals. Okay, so no tribals. But anyway, the low morale of the Thracian warriors, the tribal warriors and the Celtic warriors and the levy freemen... It's going to be worse at night because uh, they're going to be unprepared for the night battle. But I don't believe that heat is an effect. But if you look here, there are actually heat waves uh, on the ba on the battlefield here. I'm not entirely sure if a desert map at night is going to. It actually a desert map at night should have a cold, um, cold environmental effect, not a heat. B mm, but I'm I'm not entirely sure how that works in this game. But anyway, Tylus versus Galatia. Uh, we have a bunch of Oathsorn for um, five Oathsorn. Then we have four Levy Freemen, uh, two Thracian warriors on the flanks, and then we have five Celtic warriors up front, three raiding horse. So Galatia also has strong infantry, but Galatia lacks elite swords. They have sort of they are kind of like Rome in that they have sub elite swords. They are better than all of the other mid tier swords, but they're just not as good as elite swords. But they are super cost effective. The Galatian legionaries, super cost effective. The Galatian swords, super cost effective. So Galatia has a very nice sword line. The only thing they lack is elite swords. They have Cappadocian cavalry, they have the Levy Freeman, they also have Syrian archers, and they have uh, javelin cavalry. So Galatia is an, is a faction that you see a lot of good players like to use against other barbarian factions. And I think that is mainly because they, their Galatian swords are going to def defeat Celtic warriors decisively and have a lot of men remaining. While the Galatian legionaries are going to be do well in holding off, uh, in holding off enemy elites while the rest of the army comes into support. They have the expensive Cappadocian cavalry that isn't... In an infantry charging role, they are not much better than the um, heavy horse, and they are more expensive. But still a good cavalry unit, it's just that Galatia can't bring many of them, because they are um, mercenary units. So, Levy Freeman doing some damage to the raiding horse. And judging by how quickly these raiding horse started to become active, I think that heat or cold, not sure, probably heat, is still an effect at night. So, why? The creative assembly. A desert at night is a cold ass place. So, hiding in the forest here, we can see a diplomat's army coming out of the forest. And I must say, the night, uh, the lighting at night looked pretty good. Uh, it's just bad that they get the units get um, get um, morale debuff because that is I don't know who picked the map here, but Galatia. Overall, has the Galatian swords only have 40 morale, so morale is a problem for them. But they have good weapon damage and melee attack. For the Galatian legionaries, morale isn't as much of a problem. They have decent morale, not as good as the Romans of similar price. Well, not as much as the Avocati anyway, but uh, 60 morale is good. So, Levy Freeman doing their MLG thing and screening away the raiding horse. Very wide formation here by uh, Diplomat. So he knows that there probably isn't going to be good cavalry on the field for Tylus because bringing Noble Horse, some players do it, but can be super risky to bring Noble Horse instead of just spamming infantry. 
Obelix is going to reorient his lines. And if the Orthsorn gets into the Galatian, uh, Galatian Legionaries unmolested, then it's going to be a bad time for Diplomat. They're going to be able to defeat the Galatian Legionaries decisively. But if the engagement starts happening in the open here, Galatia is able to use its Cappadocians and is able to use its Syrian Archers. I think it's going to be very hard for Obelix to make his build work. Because his build is a sledgehammer of an infantry army, but what it isn't is mobile. It's not very mobile at all. It's going to be easy to kite this army and to um, to engage where Diplomat needs to engage to win. So again, cheap, cheap units being used to screen away the raiding horse. Uh, Galatian swords managed to throw some javelins here. So... Uh, the Raiding Horse probably shouldn't start skirmishing at this point. In a situation like this, I think it's much, much better. Noble Horse General, of course, uh, because the other general for Galatia is crap. He's a Noble Spearman, totally useless. The Noble Horse, nice, but very expensive melee cavalry. So the uh, Raiding Horseman, um, in a situation like this, where you have only really one high-value target. Well, you have the mercenary Cappadocians, but the high-value target is being screened by Levy Freeman. There are long-range skirmishers. It might be a better idea to just save the ammunition for... And yeah, there is definitely... Uh, there's definitely a penalty to... Uh, to um, stamina present on this field battlefield, because the Raiding Horse are very tired already, and there's no way they should be very tired if this was on a normal map. So, the high value target here is obviously the Noble Horse. Managing to snipe the Noble Horse for uh, Galatia would be massive. The Galatian Legionaries are not disciplined, so they will take the minus 30 morale hit from having the General die. That's going to be immediately when the General dies, and then when the General is dead, when it's been dead for some time, then they're going to have a minus 15 morale to their stats. And the Galatian Swords are then swinging at 25 morale, so very important to keep your general alive for uh, Barbarian units. And now the Raiding Horse are exhausted, and you see they have dropped from from um, eager to, to steady. So this might be a problem here if they eat a big volley from these Levy Freemen. Yep, they're going to fire at the Glacian Legionaries. The Glacian Legionaries have their shields turned, so very nice. Again, I think Obelix is wasting his ammunition here. You don't have a lot of ammunition with your uh, with your raiding horse, and uh, using it on Levy Freeman and the ba on the front of Glacian Legionaries that are in the forest, not the best of ideas. And if this unit isn't able to rest effectively enough. It's going to be exhausted, and it's not going to be as effective when doing rear charges. It's going to rout really quickly if it gets into combat. So, conserving the, am conserving the ammunition, conserving the stamina, two very important things with uh, Javelin Cavalry. So again, firing at Levy Freeman, no idea why. So I don't think uh, Diplomat, Diplomat can see some of the units of uh, Obelix, but... There's a lot of uh, units he can't see. Nice formation here by Diplomat, nice and wide. Galatian swords up front, Galatian legionaries behind, mercenary Syrian archers supporting in the back. And Levy Freeman, of course, doing their thing in just uh, screening away these, uh, these raiding horsemen. So now the general is open, if there isn't a unit hidden nearby. He might be able to get some sniping shots off on the... Nope, Diplomat is going to move his Noble Horse. And the Raiding Horse are going to be slower now because they're exhausted. Their melee attack is going to get reduced by a massive 50%. So by the way that the Diplomat is positioning himself here, there is no way that the Raiding Horse can get in and do the damage that they need to do. So good, good idea to wait, conserve the stamina, and then just wait until the noble horse presents himself as a target. So here we have the uh, movement. Diplomat is moving up. Escalation swords are going to destroy the Celtic warriors on the charge. Can we get a YOLO? We can get a YOLO. The noble horse is going to YOLO into the Celtic warriors. 
eating some javelins, but it's going to be able to stop the charges on a lot of these units. Very nicely done, stopping three units from getting charges by just running into them. So very nicely done here by Diplomat. That's going to be decisive. Look at the Celtic Warriors just dropping so, so quickly. Already attacked in the rear and already wavering. Morale rear charges are going to be devastating on this map. So here we have Cappadocians coming up against Thracian Warriors. The Thracian Warriors do manage to turn around. And they're going to wreck Mercenary Cappadocian Cavalry. Look at this. Destroying them so, so quickly. That unit was wasted. But all down the Celtic Warrior line... Um, Diplomat is doing very well. He's losing some uh, heavy horse to Levy Freeman. But they're in turn getting destroyed by Galatian Legionaries. Ooh, Miss Micro here by um, by uh, Oblix. Getting his, uh, getting his uh, raiding horse charged by Galatian Swords. The Galatian Swords are going to get in there. Oh, there were Mercenary Cappadocian Cavalry in there as well. So the, uh, the opening engagement looking great for Diplomat. Not looking good for Oblix. Look at the Galatian Swords stomping all over the Celtic Warriors. Galatian Swords charging into the Thracian Warriors. Uh, nice use of that unit to stop the th uh, Galatian Swords from getting in here and doing important damage. Syrian Archers are firing and the Oath Sworn are starting to move in. They're going to destroy the Galatian Swords, but when the Legionaries move in, the Oath Sworn are going to have a bad, bad time. So over here, the Raiding Horse, because they were exhausted, they got caught and they're going to get charged off the field. Oath Sworn here up against Cappadocians and Levy Freeman. The Oath Sworn really need to be in the center here to support the main fight. Raiding horse charging in, but they're not going to be effective when they are... Well, they aren't exhausted, they're only active, so... Not bad, but the Diplomat is definitely getting the best of these engagements. These units just hanging around, not really contributing to the battlefield. Uh, to the battle. Thracian warriors with 106 kills, but I guess many of them are against Levy Freeman. The general of... Uh, Noble Horse General didn't get a lot of kills on that first charge, but it did stop so many units very nicely. And now the Oathsorn of um, of Obelix are getting surrounded. And using Galatian Swords like this to get in, absorb the damage, very smart. Then move the Galatian Legionaries in to do the real killing. So not a whole lot left on the field for, uh, for uh, Obelix now. His Oathsorn are going to get a decent enough charge against the Galatian Legionaries. But they are very spread out, so they're not going to be able to penetrate the formation significantly. Still, they are Oathsorn, so they're going to do decently well. Noble Horse moving around the flank to get some charges there. The Galatian Legionaries are dropping quickly to Oathsorn. But the Oathsorn are getting ganged up on. The Galatian Swords, and this is why the Galatian Swords are so important. The Galatian Swords are able to defeat Celtic Warriors with almost 50 men remaining. And that means that they're going to be able to start to flank to get into Levy Freeman, but nicely done here by Obelix in stopping the flank. So they're going to be able to participate in the fights and to start surrounding Oathsorn. But here we have Galatian Legionaries getting wrecked by Oathsorn and Levy Freeman. Levy Freeman against Levy Freeman. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting fight. So here we have very depleted Raiding Horse, able to do damage to the Mercenary Cappadocians. But they're just so slow now, they've lost a lot of ammunition, so... Uh, even though Obelix is doing well in the center here, he doesn't have a response to the Mercenary Serum Archers, just pouring the fire into his Oathsorn General. Galatian Swords are getting defeated by Levy Freeman, because they managed to charge them. Two Oathsorn against two Legionaries, that means the Legionaries are going to win. This Legionary unit is not going to do well at all against the Oathsorn. And here's kind of the problem that Galatia has. You can defeat the low tiers, but if there are a lot of elites on the field, they're going to destroy your Galatian Legionaries. So, if, um, if that first engagement hadn't been handled as well as it was by Diplomat, then it could have been difficult for him to grind it out against the Oathsorn, especially in the forest. Because you can see the Syrian Archers have been firing for a long time. And they haven't been gotten a huge amount of kills. The kills they get are very important, because they are against Oathsorn. But they're not getting very many kills. Because they're firing at units with high armor. And they're firing into forests, so... It's going to make them less effective. And the Noble Horse is... Uh, has taken a lot of casualties here, actually. So, the Galatian Legionaries are... Are uh, not doing well against the Oathsorn. When they're up two against one, they're doing decently well, but they're still losing so many men. 
the raiding horse being chased away so imagine now if obelix has his raiding horse left and he can go for the archers he can go and snipe the general uh, if he managed to do that then this game might very well be his but um, getting too active with with raiding horse in the opening stages of the battle and not being patient enough has cost me a lot of battles and uh, it looks like that might cost Obelix the battle here as well, as well as not engaging quickly enough with his oath sworn so that his unit, his uh, strong infantry force was engaged piecemeal by Galatia. Nice charge here coming in for the oath sworn against the Galatian legionaries. 152 kills, probably some low level stuff as well. Nice charge against the Levy Freeman from the noble horse. Levy free men moving into support. These Galatian legionaries are going to get wrecked by the Oathsorn. In the forest, the Oathsorn are holding out against two Galatian legionaries, but um, the Galatian legionaries are still have a lot of men left in the unit. Cavalry left on the field for Diplomati also has his uh, mercenary steering archers. They could potentially start firing into the open now if they move a bit to the side. Oathsorn charging into the Galatian legionaries going to do a lot of damage to them. Another unit of Galatian legionaries being defeated by Oathsorn. But the cavalry units of uh, Diplomat are going to be a huge problem. It looks like the general of uh, the general of Obelix is going to take a lot of casualties now for from the extended fire by the Syrian archers. And the Syrians actually have a resistance to heat, so they are fresh still. More Galatian legionaries getting defeated. Nice firing coming against the Oathsorn. Uh, the general of Obelix is going to go down momentarily. Not a lot of infantry left on the field for, um, for Galatia. Its infantry was defeated by the Oathsorn. Uh, the problem is that that uh, Obelix only has infantry so he has mainly very tired or exhausted infantry that is going to have to try to somehow avoid getting charged from all sides by cavalry and uh, skirmish to death but it looks like Diplomat is mismicroing his uh, archers here so they're getting charged by Oathsorn that is a bad time to be a Syrian archer Looks like uh, the general of uh, Obelix might be going down anytime soon. But these Syrian archers are basically off the field. And that was massive for Obelix being able to take care of those guys. This unit of Galatian legionaries, these Oathsorn should probably stay away from it. Because these Galatian legionaries are going to defeat the Oathsorn. But there is Oathsorn coming in to support here. So they might actually be able to do it if they're able to get into the rear of the Galatian legionaries. Levy Freeman coming in. Doing some damage on the charge to the Oathsorn. Even Levy Freeman can get some kills on when they rear charge. But these archers are going to be a huge problem for Obelix. So are the Cappadocians. Having cavalry in the late game is so important. And uh, now the general of Obelix is going to die. And when he does, and when there is the penalty from being exhausted and for the heat effect on the map, there isn't much this one lone Oathsorn unit left on the field is going to do. I really like this battle, uh, although it was uh, yet another barbarian uh, army against a barbarian army, there are very intense and very important points in the battle that basically decide how the battle is going to go. So let's have a look at the kills, Look at the compare the Celtic warriors to the Galatian swords here, 65, 65, 20, 43, 24. The Galatian Swords, 93, 123, 122, 19, 18, and 45. The Galatian Legionaries do well. The Old Sorn do very well, of course. One of the Thracian Warriors did extremely well. But the Raiding Horse, I truly believe that the Raiding Horse cost Oblix the game in getting his Raiding Horse exhausted, wasting the ammunition, not being able to snipe the General. If he was able to snipe the General, I am almost entirely sure that he would have won this battle. Also, if he had been able to get into the Mercenary Serum Archers with his Raiding Horse, because there are only three cavalry units on the field for Galatia. So when the engagements start happening, it would have been completely feasible for Tylus to get in and uh, destroy the the uh, Levy Freeman. Now, one thing that um, one thing that can be nice to be aware of. 
uh, the way that Obelix sent in his Celtic warriors like that is, was just alone, was begging to have them charged by cavalry and to have their charges stopped. So imagine if Obelix now supported his Celtic warriors with these Thracian warriors. The noble horse charge into the Celtic warriors, levy freemen are firing javelins and the Thracian warriors with their 20 bonus against large are going to run in and start wrecking the noble horse. Now in that case I don't think that um, Diplomat would have YOLO'd, I think he would have kept his distance. Uh, maybe tried to fire at the Thracians with his mercenary serial archers but, but still I think um, just looking at the two builds and the map, uh, how much forest there was on this map, uh, I think that uh, I think that um, I think that um, Obelix definitely had the stronger, at least had the stronger infantry build in this case, although he wasn't able to use it as effectively as he could have, and that is not to critique uh, Obelix in in any way. Uh, I mean, uh, Diplomat is a very good player, but. Um, but I'm not just going to comment on these battles and say that everything I see is amazing because this is just me watching a game and commenting on things as they happen. So if a player makes a mistake, no matter how, how good the player, I'm going to point it out. And that's not to to try to to look superior or to to um, to pretend to be better than the players I'm watching because it is, of course, much easier to sit in complete peace and quiet to watch a game and it's kind of like watching a sport where everyone knows how the athletes could have done better although they have no experience with the sport themselves everyone knows how a football game game could have been played differently everyone knows how a boxer should have uh, countered the moves of his opponent and so on so it's kind of like that take it with a grain of salt but but uh, I think those things, keeping everything closer together, keeping everything in support, would have made it a lot more difficult for Galatia. And also keeping the raiding horse just as a threat would have been, could have been effective in keeping away the Cappadocians and the noble horse. So good, interesting game. Well played to both players. Strength and honor.